You can now follow me on all my social media platforms to find out who my latest guest will be. And don't forget to click the subscribe button and the notifications button so you're notified for when my next podcast goes live. The documentary, it just, it doesn't give you exactly, it, it makes it seem like it was like, I'm go, sneaking down your chimney and <laughs> I'm going to take your naked pictures. Well, nothing like that, man. It was, again, like everything I did was, it, the whole thing was organic, right? As far as the, the hacking or any of that bullshit, it was more like at the beginning, like, dude, I had hundreds of millions of unique hits a day. Like I didn't need to... Like we were getting so many photos and videos. It wasn't like I didn't need to hack anything. Yeah, it was way too loud. They were they were doing anything they could to get me. Um, they were seizing my servers constantly and they found a hole with me, you know, purchasing photos as a commodity, which was a huge mistake. Obviously, I wish I had never done that. You got to give me a break here because it was such a long time ago. Our major demographic was girls submitting their boyfriends and they don't ever talk about that. <laughs> No one gives a fuck about the guys, right? What sort of money were you making, Hunter? A lot of money. Like, a lot of fucking money, dude. Like, I don't I don't remember numbers, but probably like 30 to 50, like after paying my overhead a month. Like, a lot of money, dude. Well, now I'm in Colombia, but like, I, I could say whatever they want. Like, I could turn into, I could start dressing like Hitler, dude. What are you guys gonna do? No one can do anything. Like, you've already canceled me, dude. I'm done. Do you know how much time they want to give you? And I was like, what? He's like, they want 54 years. And I was like, for what? What the fuck? Boom, we're on. And today's guest, we've got Hunter Moore, the most hated man on the internet, apparently. Hunter, how are you? Good, how are you doing? Yeah, good, thank you. First of all, thanks for coming on the show. Of course. Um, a man, like you say, with the status with the most hated man on the internet, would probably change because there's been probably more hated man over the f last few years, but obviously with the yeah. Netflix documentary just coming out, it's obviously reignited some fire and it's obviously this is everybody's talking about you again. Now you're, you're back to doing your interviews, back out of prison, like... Keeping your head above water, <laughs> but how's things, first of all? Uh, well, first of all, you, you got to give me a break because your your accent is, <laughs> is thick, man. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm good, man. I, uh, you know, just living life. I'm, uh, you know, the Nef like you said, the Netflix documentary came out, but, you know, I, I've moved on. I mean, that was nearly 12 years ago or that I started that website. So, um, you know, I've moved on. I guess the media hasn't yet, but yeah, I'm doing okay. That's all part and parcel of it, I guess. But I always go back to the start of my guest, Hunter. Kind of get a bit of understanding about yourself, where you grew up, and how it all began. Uh, sure, yeah. Um, well, my name's Hunter Moore. Um, I grew up right outside Sacramento, California. Um, I don't know. I don't know. the. I'm sure the demo for you is the UK, right? Or uh, English and whatever um so california it's Cal I know when people think of california especially uh in europe they just think of los angeles well i'm from northern california about eight hours away from los angeles um right outside the capital and just a really tiny small farming community i went grew up going to a christian school and uh you know i grew up in a very religious household my sister was a missionary um so yeah i've been around the church my whole life and uh yeah, man. Once you, uh, once uh, I came of age, like most people, you know, you finally get out of the church and you want to go crazy. And I think I just went a little too crazy. And uh, yeah, that was pretty much pretty much it. How were you at school, Hunter? How was well I was I at school? Yeah, were you good at school? No, hell no, dude. Hell no. I <laughs> I I didn't even graduate. I think I dropped out of school in ninth grade, maybe ninth or tenth grade. I don't remember. So, um, and I got my, my ed general education in prison. So that was just a few years ago. So not very far. Did you get expelled from school? Uh, yeah, I got expelled and then I went to, um, you know, just for like fights and stuff. And then I went to a, what we call a continuation school. And then I just said, 
nah. <laughs> and uh yeah i mean i was too more interested in the computer you know and yeah what about mom and dad mom and dad uh salt of the earth great people um uh military family on the side of my dad then he went uh, he was like a national guard and then he became a technician and uh my mom it's good she worked for the city of davis another small uh, community outside sacramento just really good people you know middle class nothing crazy what was your first job my first job damn dude uh I don't. I for, oh, I was a paintball referee. You know, paintball. <laughs> <laughs> that that's that, they're fucking sore. That's so yeah. sore when you get hit with those fuckers. But yeah, dude, I was like fifteen and just you know come home all welted up and stuff. But it was awesome. But yeah, that was my first job. Um, but yeah, like first serious job, I worked at a skate shop. Like you know, like a skateboarding shop. Um, yeah, and then that's kind of actually. I think that that's what segue me into being a complete scumbag because I just learned how to like bang girls at the mall, and it just sent me on that pathway. I think you know partying and all that stuff. So that would probably be like my first real job was Zoomies, and then yes. yeah, <laughs> yeah. So a kid who's got a good family background, good mom and dad. Like yep. oh, you never done well at school, but you left. You got a job. Like. You're basically just doing like any teenager would do. Want to make a bit of money, fuck girls, like the basic stuff in life, if we're honest. But how did then yeah. is anyone up dot com come about? Um well so uh, I mean basically everything that's out there online is a is a lie. And um it's mostly on my part too, because I would bait the media about, you know, just just like people do now, you know, like trying to uh, you know, get your name out there and traffic and all this stuff. So um, I never really gave out like the true story. And Netflix doesn't, I think Netflix said I started it because a girl broke my heart or some stupid fucking thing. Um, I had, uh, I had worked at another retail shop after Zoomies that I was telling you about. And uh, I, the, <laughs> it's kind of a crazy story. The my buddy Ray was the manager, and he got me a job at this place and at this retail shop. And he was like, "Listen, man, I can get you the job. You just got to pretend you're gay." And I was like, "All right, yeah." And so this dude, the manager, he he hired uh, like me and all my friends, and he would like grab our butts and like try and kiss our necks and shit and like all this stuff. Well, uh, one day I was closing out the cash re register and he came up from behind me and he put his hands down the front of my pants and kissed my neck. And I was like, well, I was pissed. Right. So then the next day I'm talking to this girl, like ringing her up and he does it again. And he's all Hunter, why are you talking to her? We all know you're a faggot. And so I got pissed. Right. And I was, I wanted to hit him and I'll, I'll get to the point here in a second, but he, uh, so then I, it was like stewing in my mind like the whole night because he embarrassed me in front of this girl. So I'm closing out the cash register that night. He does it again. And I, I hit him in the face with my elbow. Boom. And we get into this huge fight. He threw me to the ground, beat my ass. I came to and he was dragging me across the floor. Long story short, I ended up suing him. And uh, two years later, I won a ton of fucking money. And uh, I just kind of went crazy and started a. Uh, uh, just going partying. I took all that money and just traveled the world and went partying. Started uh, a promotion company. I had parties in Sydney, Australia, New York City, San Francisco, whatever. And to promote all my parties, I would put it on a website. And that website, I named it isanyoneup.com. And so I would just post all the flyers on there for my friends and share them on, at the time, it was just Facebook and MySpace, you know? And that's, that's how Is Anyone Up started. What was the first post on it? The first, the first post ever was just a flyer to one of my parties. But if you're referring to like when it became "Is Anyone Up," um, I was there was this really famous band at the time called Bless the Fall, and I was banging this dude's girlfriend, and I wanted to show my buddy Carlos uh, the pictures and my friend Lally the pictures of the girl because she was so fine, right? And uh, at the time, this was on. Uh, I don't know if you remember AOL Instant Messenger, but um, he basically you connect on. It was just chat or whatever, but everybody could FaceTime. Well, not FaceTime Cam, and you could so someone couldn't save the image, you would drag it 
like drag and drop it. And everyone in the cam like this would see the file because I didn't want them to save it. I wasn't that demented yet. And uh, <laughs> it wouldn't connect. So we kept restarting it, restarting it. And then my boy, Carlos, and this dude, Lally, I was friends with who worked at Google at the time. He was like, just put it on. Is anyone up? And so I put it on. Is anyone up? And I was going to take it down. And then all the all the boys just started adding to it. And it went from just two or three of us to four or five of us to 10 of us. Then and it just snowballed. So just from like a normal kid who's working, trying to survive, You've started up this website. It's not about revenge, revengeful exes or revenge porn at the time. You're just doing it for flyers, parties, drugs, girls. Like <laughs> you've started it off just to maybe grow a network and obviously it's it's grew arms and legs. But was it see when you started getting hits on it, did that become a buzz hunter? Did you feel a bit more empowered? Yeah, it, it, so you know, the thing started completely organic. Like you said, it just started growing arms and legs, you know, and you got to understand like, right now, you know, I'm 36 years old. So this shit was is so old to me. And, you know, ha, ha, obviously if I had this mindset now, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have done that, but, uh, it, it just started so slow. It was like a slow burn at first, like just with the friends, you know, and it wasn't, no one knew about it, but what happened was, you know, when the 10, 12, 20 of our friends uh, that we all went to go partying with were just having a good laugh and, you know, doing our thing, um, a bodybuilding forum picked it up. And I think it was bodybuildingforum.com and they posted it. And overnight, it, I, it just went from zero to a fucking million. And uh, I wasn't like when it started, like you're saying, it was started getting hits. It was more like it wasn't like a dopamine rush or like a drug at first. You know, it was like, whoa, what the hell am I doing? Like, this is crazy. I, you know, this is uncharted waters. Maybe I should take this down. Like, what is this? But then immediately afterwards, the money came. So it was like it, that, that fear and that, uh, you know, the, that moral foundation that I, that I, I had was completely out the fucking window <laughs> because now money was involved. And so I didn't really have that, that time to, um, to really process what was going on or you know I, I and i didn't have i didn't have anybody around me to to be like yo 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 let's pump the brakes here real quick it was just like dude i'm fucking doing it you know so um yeah i hope that answers your question a little yeah. bit how old were you at the time hunter oh man i was like 22 23 something like that maybe maybe 21 yeah something like that and see when it started becoming like revenge porn like how did that come about well, that see, so like the documentary, it just it doesn't give you exactly. It, it makes it seem like it was like I'm go, sneaking down your chimney and <laughs> I'm gonna take your naked pictures. Well, nothing like that, man. It was again like everything I did was it, the whole thing was organic, right? So, and I was in a music scene and a party scene, and it was just for a certain group of people, and it wasn't revenge porn or. Uh, any of that stuff it was just uh guys posting their exes or girls posting themselves or guys posting themselves or girls do you know what i mean like it wasn't it wasn't anything that was meant to be malicious at, at first um it was just kind of this thing that was like jokes and it was and it like we had major record labels buying advertisements for bands like it was a very open and accepted thing it didn't have that stigma yet when Forbes came into uh, came into the picture, it was uh, the journalist Kashmir Kashmir Day, I believe. She's the one that coined the term revenge porn. Revenge porn was a niche that was for ex girlfriend porn videos online. Like, but it looked it was am it looked amateur, but it was porn produced. I don't know. If, this is like you know, fifteen years ago. So uh, there's only fans now, but. Back then, it was called revenge porn, and so she just was like, "I don't know, I don't know what niche you fall in," and so I'm just going to call it revenge porn in this article, and that's kind of how the thing, the the term got coined. But uh, I, I know I keep rambling, but uh, it was it it wasn't anything that was malicious at first. For maybe the first year, it was all just good fun and people submitting themselves. It wasn't it wasn't like how the Netflix documentary portrays where I'm sneaking in everyone's phones and stuff. Yeah, because it kind of portrays that you upload everything. You're hacking people. You're 
sending nudes, no. you're taking people's private photos, like all the no. interviews you've done was kind of, it looks bad if I'm honest. Like, yeah. they've, just, they've just been through under the bus. Listen, it's gr- obviously you're here, they tell your side of the story today and, and that's yes. what it's all about. Do you know what I mean? But how did it then, when like girls' nude photos are uploaded and they're requesting to get them took down? So, um, there, okay. So you gotta understand, like I said before, this went from zero to a hundred really fucking quick. Um, I, I had to build out a whole system myself to, to, cause, okay. Uh, how do I explain it? So again, you know, I'm a young, stupid, retarded kid, right? <laughs> and the site took off from zero to a hundred. My main concern at the time, which was my only concern you know, I don't know. I've been to prison. I, I, have you been to prison? I think you've been to prison. Yeah. I don't know. I fucking hate sex offenders. And I hated them before I ever went to prison. So my only main goal was to make sure that everybody was 18 years old. That was my only fucking concern. If I was going to continue doing this and monetizing it, I need to make sure people are 18. So I built a whole system uh, to make sure that when people submitted pictures, that they would submit it, they would have to fill out a whole form and you'd have to, pr- you'd have to supply EXIF data. And then we, I can't say too much because I don't want to get any more legal trouble, but we had a way of checking IDs and we would match it up with the EIF. I don't know if you know what EXIF data is at all. No. So every, every, okay, a digital photo, like say you take it on your phone. Uh, that's why we only took digital photos is it'll give you longitude, latitude, lens flare, the whole nine yards and a date of when that picture was taken. If, uh, if you screen cap a picture and send that picture, it won't have the EXI, EXIF data on it. So you would have to provide the original image. So that way the dates would line up. We would put it through our system. I had all, I, and at the end of the day, I had five people that were age verifying. And, um, then, then it would get passed on to, then you would get posted on the site, right? As far as the, the hacking or any of that bullshit, it was more like at the beginning, like, dude, I had, hundreds of millions of unique hits a day like i didn't need to like we were getting so many photos and videos it wasn't like i didn't need to hack anything what the this i forgot your original question because i keep fucking rambling but yeah that's okay uh, just on your gopro yeah. <laughs> so uh but you gotta understand like uh i you know, so I'm building out this business. I'm I'm learning the law. I'm learning U.S. internet law. You know, the uh, Communications Decency Act, Section 230. I'm just sitting here like, and I, you know, I I have no formal education or anything, and I'm you know trying to run this business, and it's just uh, you know it, I'm just and, and I'm on I'm doing blow every fucking night, drinking and partying, so that didn't help either. Um, but again, my main concern though at the end of the day was to make sure everybody was age verified and. Uh, that was pretty much it. I had no other, I had, I had no other liability because of the U S law. Um, section two thirty states that a website owner isn't liable for the content that its users post. So that's why we had the big forum. So when the user submits it, I have, I, I have no liability. You took all the liability, but I just need to make sure that they were 18. As far as like the hacking and stuff, we started, uh, I started looking, you know, switching to a business mindset where like, okay, nudes are a commodity, you know, this is oil, this is fucking, you know, (laughs) bottles of water, food, whatever. I started looking at it as a business. So when I would go, I would go out, I would, people would come up to me and they'd be like, bro, I've got so-and-so's photos. Uh, I'll sell them to you. Or I'd get emails like celebrities, you know, photos. And that's, that's what I would do. And I eventually created a team and I gave them a budget and they would go out and buy photos. So the reason I got in trouble is because we were buying photos. My team was buying photos. And the one of the guys who was a friend, uh, my Rami, who was in my case where I got the money at the, um, you know, I told you that guy sexually harassed me and I won the, the money. Well, I hired... Uh, my friend from that store's cousin and he was going to San Diego state university. He knew a guy, he was, they were in the club scene and they were just getting pictures for me. But this was just one of hundreds of people that we were buying photos from. And you know, the feds wanted me. I was way too loud. They were, they were doing anything they could to get me. Um, They were seizing my servers constantly and they found a hole with me 
you know, purchasing photos as a commodity, which was a huge mistake. Obviously, I wish I had never done that. Um, and yeah, the guy was hacking them and uh, I got a conspiracy charge. So he was arrested for hacking and doing all of that stuff. Uh, but because uh, it was associated with me and as anyone up, they gave me the conspiracy charge. So I transferred all of his charges onto me. They had him rat on me and uh, on my other co-defendant, and they gave me all the charges. And obviously, I was the name and all that stuff. So um, I got my co-defendant's charges. I don't know who he is. I've never met him. I don't even know what the fuck he looks like. Um, so yeah, that's basically what happened. So you're basically just seeing dollar signs. You're not thinking about the consequences, people's feelings, exactly. people's mental health. Like, no. You're just thinking money, 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 and you're not really giving a fuck at the time. No, and it's, uh, uh, I don't know. I mean, I think you could probably relate, maybe, I don't know, to being 20 years old and getting all the pussy you want. And just uh, like, I went from zero to a hundred, you know, and that, that awesome moral foundation that I, that I started with, uh, when I was, when it was truly put to the test, I just said, fuck it. You know what I mean? Um, and I, you know, we live and we learn though. So do you, do you feel you need to ha have that fuck it button when you are doing such things like that, like where you just had to switch off completely? Yeah, it was kind of like, yeah, that's actually a good point. Um, yeah, it was more like, well, you know, if I'm going to do this, I guess we might as well jump in, you know? Um, yeah, I mean, shit. Yeah, I guess, I guess that kind of is what it was. Yeah. Because it, obviously it says you're the most hated hated man on the internet, but people loved you as well. Like people backed you and supported what you've done. Oh, yeah. I mean, that that's the thing is, uh, you know, the site was was insane i i had a massive following i mean even in the netflix documentary like people are tattooing my face on their bodies like uh you, you gotta you gotta understand like this the whole netflix like they could have done something so fucking cool dude like obviously i the the people on the other side they definitely like, they their story needs to be told I'm, I'm not saying that it doesn't need to be told right but like, dude, it could have been so much cooler. Like, there was a whole nother side, a whole nother element to this thing. And like, I mean, dude, I was flown around the world doing parties and people were coming to my shows. Like, nobody, like, I, you know what I mean? Like, why, okay, why would, why are people tattooing this on his leg? Like, why, you know, why was this music so popular? Why was, do you know what I mean? Like, there's got, there's obviously a contrast in this story. So what's going on? So I feel like they missed the mark a little bit. It says on the documentary that they asked you to be on it and you rejected. Yeah. Is, is that correct? Yeah. So I was initially, so you got to understand, like I've been through these, I mean, dude, HBO, fuck, I mean, you name it, dude, I've done filming with these fucking morons for so long and they're all liars, dude. I fucking hate journalists. They're fucking losers, dude. Like they're just, I, I can't stand them. They're all fucking liars. They're never going to, they're not, they're not going to let me, they're not going to give me a good send off. Even if I was like, you know, <laughs> just shoot myself in the head and say, I'm fucking sorry. They still, I, they don't give a fuck. Do you know what I mean? So, uh, excuse my language, but, um, yeah. So I initially, I had just gotten off probation and I was in Mexico and they called me and like, I remember I was on the beach and they, they were like, well, the CFO, I think it was the CFO or CEO or some shit of Netflix was on the phone and it was like, wants to FaceTime you and tell you that, uh, you know, he's all excited for this and all this shit. And I was like, fuck, okay. Like I'll talk to the dude from Netflix. And so they got me all riled up and I was like, fuck it. Yeah, I'll do it. All right. I'll do it. You know? And my, and then, um, you know, that high came down and I talked to my family and my friends and everyone was like, dude, don't fucking do this shit. Like just move on. And, um, so I was like, no, no, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it because that, that itch came back, you know, like, Oh, I'm going to be famous again. You know, like it, it, it started coming back and, um, yeah, dude, I just, uh, I, I remember I was emailing with them and I was like, okay guys, like, I don't know if I want to do this. Like, you guys aren't going to give me any financial compensation. Like, what the fuck am I getting out of this? You know? And they fucking accidentally CC'd me. It was a BCC on uh, the whole fucking, like, all of them chatting about me. And I, and they were all talking shit about me. 
the producers and stuff. So I just, I, I replied back and I was like, yo, fuck you guys. Like if you do, you know, I just went crazy and I hired a defamation attorney and all this other shit. And that was where the fallout was. And so they didn't, they didn't put that in the documentary, but uh, yeah, I ended up, I, I was going to do it, but then I reneged on it. And I just said, fuck it. And I'm glad I, I didn't do it. So anyway, what's the, what's the law for them using your name and your photos and stuff Like, can, can you sue or, no, unfortunately. So as a public figure, um, you can actually, you could look into it right now. There's a big thing with Hulu and Mike Tyson that's going on right now. They just did a Hulu, just did a documentary on Mike Tyson, um, without his permission, but making it seem like th- he was working with them. And as a public figure in the States, like you, anyone can tell your story any way they want to. Um, but, uh, you still have to b- abide by defamation and slander. Uh, you know, you can't just say I was out there, you know, sucking 10 penises a night or something like that. <laughs> like there's gotta be some form of fucking truth here. And they definitely, I'd say they, there was 10% truth in that documentary. Obviously I'm a little bit biased, but um, they, they, they did break the law. It's just, they're a behemoth and they have a lot of money and it's not just Netflix. It's raw who produced it and um, they have a ton of money too. So it's going to be probably two years of discovery. So there won't be an outcome for a a while. See, when you started getting all the attention and the fame, like did you just start believing your own hype and start living in a bubble where it was like a different world? Like where you felt untouchable because obviously some of your interviews, you genuinely didn't give a fuck. The stuff you say is like, it was just so off the cuff, but did you believe that was going to take you to, certain heights where it wouldn't come back and bite you in the ass basically um well look at but i'll say it like this it's really easy to to look at everything now in hindsight especially where we are culturally um i mean we're both in the west and obviously well i'm not a i'm not a fucking liberal so um you know, just letting you know, but, uh, it's easy. I just know everything's been pussified in the last 12 to 15 years. And it's really easy to look back now and judge what was happening in the past, especially when we're in such a sensitive time now. Um, so, uh, you know, saying all that crazy shit or whatever is like, yeah, I mean, I guess it was crazy, but you got to understand I was running a business and a lot of that stuff was calculated. And at the time, you know, now, like, obviously the timeline's all fucked up, but like a lot of the stuff I was saying was to, to get, you know, press from the mainstream media. I mean, people do the same shit now. It's the same fucking thing. It's just, uh, it, it was a different type of baiting because, you know, we were coming out of fucking the early 2000s, man. And, you know, it wasn't like now where, you know, everything's so pussified. But, um, I mean, I do agree. I did say some probably some crazy shit, but I don't know. You got to give me, you got to give me a break here because it was such a long time ago. But uh, see, when you, <laughs> what was the Anderson live when you went on and two of the girls who are like victims are when they get nudes sent in, but you sat next to them. Like, what made you do that? <clears throat> Again, man, like I told you, everything is a fucking lie. Those were my friends, dude. Like, what? We all flew, yeah, we all flew on the plane together. Like, dude, that, the, the little skinny girl, okay, that dude Brody that was sitting next to me in the purple sweater, that's my best friend. We flew on the plane and then we both tag team that girl in the fucking hotel right after. Like, this shit is, it, it, they call it cooking. They, they call it cooking the show. Like that girl used to submit her nudes all the time so she could get Twitter followers. We're, she's from Roseville, California. I'm from Woodland. It's about 30 minutes away. Like, bro, we're all friends. We all flew on the same flight together. We all flew home. We all got fucked up together. It's all a lie. It's all a fucking lie. But anyways. <laughs> fucked up, man. Like, like people are, like, then I, I watch that and I'm thinking, he uh, takes some balls to be sitting out across from two girls and basically saying, it's your own fault for sending nudes. Like a lot of the girls <laughs> whose nudes are there, like they says that like, well, their stuff was hacked, stuff and that. And you're just saying, well, you shouldn't be sending them. Like, did you find yourself arguing a lot with people who says no. nothing? But that's the thing, dude. There was only a, that minimal amount of stuff was hacked. Everything else was like self-submitted, and our major demographic was girls submitting their boyfriends and they don't ever talk about that 
no one gives a fuck about the guys, right? But there was more fucking penises on that site than there was vaginas. Just, just, uh, just letting you know. Uh, you could go to the Wayback Machine and look at uh, how is anyone up was. I mean, I don't know if you want to look at a bunch of penises, but anyway, I'm just saying, like, it's just convenient the way they tell this story, and that's because you know, excuse my language, the whole media is ran by gays and and fe- uh, females and radical feminists. So, of course, they're not going to say anything about the men. But our biggest demographic was girls submitting met their boyfriends or boys or whatever, girls submitting themselves and girls on the comments talking about other girls. So it's not like this wasn't like the hack stuff was just like a 0.5% of what the co- all the content was on the site. And we do, we had articles, segments, there was all kinds of shit. It wasn't just fucking pictures of naked people. I mean, there was, but there was a bunch of other stuff. So yeah, the, I, I just think the idea of, I, it, it's just really frustrating. I'm sorry, man, it, that the idea of the site has just been so twisted by the media. It's like uh, the site was it was fun and it was awesome. I mean, but it, it, there was men and women. It wasn't just a bunch of hacked photos. It was about it was it was is anyone up, or sorry, it was only fans before only fans. You know what I mean? When did it start? When did you start feeling the heat from like the police and stuff? Like, was that later on or was there always concerns? No, so I so the last like six to eight months, I had completely stepped away from the site, and it was because at that time I was <laughs> I uh, I rented a Maserati because I dude I was like fucking out of my mind, right? And I rented a Maserati, and uh, while well, we were driving to Reno, Nevada, and I hadn't smoked weed in like ten years, and I'm, and I'm with all my friends, and we're like just doing bumps and smoking, and fuck it hit me dude like the weed hit me and i'm dr- and we're driving and it looked like i was driving completely up like that's how high i was and i got a phone call from my business manager and he's like what the fuck are you doing and i was like what i'm driving going party and he's like the fbi just sur- or just raided our servers and just took everything the sites down and i was like what and i was high out of my mind dude and i just like i thought i was gonna have a fucking heart attack i had to pull over and uh he was just like freaking out like i could hear him shaking and then my server guy called me and he's like the feds are at my door dude they want all the (laughs) access to all the servers and all this crazy shit and like yeah it was horrible man and then uh it was actually really fucked up is because uh everyone was like i was like i'm driving home but i was so high that no one told me i was still driving to reno so (laughs) i ended up going to reno and partying but anyways uh yeah, so that was like the first time, but then it was just a consistent thing where like we would get servers, they would uh go, they'd raid our servers, wouldn't find anything. Get, it was just a fucking cat and mouse game. And then I just uh stepped away from the site completely the last like 9 months and yeah, that was pretty much it. What sort of money were you making, Hunter? A lot of money. Like a lot of fucking money, dude. Like I don't I don't remember numbers, but pro- like 30 to 50 like after paying my overhead a month like a lot of money dude do you think the greed then catches up with you where you just basically sell your soul just to keep continuously try to make money to feed the party lifestyle well no because the thing the money was never like to me the money was nothing dude like i because you gotta understand like everything was paid for me because not only did i have the website i had a music career as well and then i had a a a twitter career a social media career after that so like people were flying me places you know free free drugs hotels like none of that stuff uh you know i was taking care of my family like i was i was doing uh you know I i was doing well but like the money wasn't the the money was never a factor for me. It was all just feeding this fucking ego machine, man. Like just, just pussy and drugs and just, just getting bigger and like watching my follower count go up. And it was just like, wow. The, but the money, the money was nothing, dude. It was just, it was just consuming uh, more for my ego, you know. Yeah. See, when you started going mainstream. And obviously, it's love and hate. Then, like people did love you and, and backed everything you done, and obviously people hated you. But did anyone ever try and attack you outside of it? No, that see, that's. I mean, 
<laughs> See, that, that's kind of the, pr- the problem that I think uh, I had is that, you know, I grew up fighting, you know, like I love to fight, like I'm an aggressive dude. You know, I, I grew up, I, I didn't grow up in the hood or nothing, but I grew up fighting. And, um, you know, it was kind of like I was thrown into this industry, which was like a bunch of pussy nerds who like, you know, they're just like coders and shit. And I'm just like this fucking little half Mexican, half white ghetto ish kid that's in that industry. Right. So like, if you followed me on any of that stuff, like I would press people like, bro, you want to talk shit? Well, come here. Like I would try and fly people out to me. I would post my address. Like I'd go to parties, like, fuck it. Let's do it. Let's meet it. Let's run it. Like nobody ever pressed me. I had one guy, uh, I, well, I got into, I was doing a club uh, in Dallas and this guy pissed me off and I got into a fight and I broke my hand and I was on the plane. (laughs) <laughs> this old man pressed me at the bathroom on a plane and almost got into a fight there. And that was the only fucking time. And I was saying like, I'm badass and I could beat everybody up. It was just like, I was never going to let anybody punk me. But the only time I really had an issue was like that old man. And that, that was it. Every, but every, everybody else would like still to this day, like, bro, I'm in fucking Columbia. Motherfuckers want pictures with me still. Like I'd never have a bad experience. You know what I mean? What was the most viewed video on is anyone up.com? Well, you gotta man, this is a long time ago. Like we really didn't put videos on the site. Like it was just, mostly images. Just pictures? Yeah. No, we, we had some videos, but this was like when the iPhone 4 came out. That's how long ago this shit was, dude. So it wasn't uh like the bandwidth that it's just the technology wasn't really there to serve videos back then. You know what I mean? Like people were on 3G, bro. Like this, like we're on 5G X or some shit now. Like you could have. <laughs> so yeah, it was mostly images. What was the worst images you seen? Um, so the, and you know, I've said this a million fucking times and nobody's ever put this in any interview or whatever. But the, the reason I really, like besides you know i had a lot of stress with the site and stuff but the really bad stuff that that like kind of set me over the edge was you know after um anderson cooper was when it like i told you earlier like this was a scene you know it was a music scene um but once the mainstream media caught on that's when the all the fucking weirdos came out like all of the weirdos dude and so that's when we started getting like cp you know um then we started getting like death what i called death revenge um was and it was always women or girls they they would find like pictures of a girl that maybe died that they knew that died in a car accident or hung themselves and they got pictures and they would submit that making fun of the person or people cutting off dogs heads and having sex with them like just crazy shit and that's that's why I, I stepped back and I had a team take over because um, it, 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 yeah, it was just too much for me, man. Like, I know like people think I'm probably the, you know, the most hated man on the internet. I'm like a horrible person, but like, I still have a, it was still just too much for me, man. Like it wasn't fun. It wasn't, it, do you know what I mean? It was, yeah. So anyways. Yeah. But like I say, like, obviously the documentaries and stuff can paint you out as a fucking monster and, Obviously, speaking to you today, I don't know your full story. I can only judge by speaking, and you seem quite level-headed. You've obviously matured from the 21, 22-year-old kid who didn't really give a fuck, not really caring about the consequences. Obviously, you'll have girls broken-hearted and struggling with that, and a lot of people might have been suicidal. A lot of people might have took their own life with some of those images getting released. But back then, it was I don't think it was as extreme social media and as it is now that it can be ruthless like yeah. so many people take their lives now because they want to fit in with everybody else never mind images getting leaked like but some girls obviously the, is it the woman um charlotte laws she seems yeah. to be always on at you because it was that because her daughter images were released i don't know how to say so obviously this you know the, the lady's written a book about me You know, she's been dying to be famous her whole life. She's, you know, found this one little thing and, you know, has ran with it. Um, I don't like to mention her because it's, to be honest, she creeps me out. She would sit outside in front of my parents' house. She would, I mean, you could look, type in BuzzFeed, Hunter Moore, Charlotte Laws. She would follow me in costumes around the country and spy on me. I mean, her, 
the reason I was the reason I was tried and sentenced or that I was arrested was her name. Okay, her name is Charlotte Laws, right? Well, her husband his name is Charles Purcell. Charles Purcell is a fe- one of the top federal mediators in Los Angeles. The the federal courthouse that I was sentenced in Los Angeles, her husband's office was right above there. He knew the judge. He knew everyone. When I got sentenced, they, his whole family was there and they were kissing and hugging the fucking federal prosecutors and all this shit. This lady has, I mean, dude, it's been fucking 12 years, bro. You're still exploiting your daughter's busted ass titties. Like, bro, you're, how old are you now? Like, let's just move the fuck on. No one gives a fuck. No one, like, no, <laughs> what, dude, like, I understand, like, okay, you're, maybe your daughter was hacked, maybe she wasn't, whatever the fuck. I'm sorry, but like, it's it's been a, it's been a long time, and I'm supposed to be the crazy one, yet I'm the only one who's moved on. And um, you know, that was one of the main reasons that I didn't do the Netflix documentary is because this. I don't I don't care about me, like you know. Obviously, I need to pay. I you know I need to have some consequences for what I've done. Um, but at, at the end of the day, it's my family, uh, my friends, you know, uh, everybody else that I didn't care about back in the day now having to relive this over and over again. And this lady just will not fuck off. And, you know, it's uh, it, 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 it's really it's really weird and it's really creepy um, at this point. But it is what it is. I have to live with it. It's the consequences of my actions. So um, but, you know, there is a there is a long documented um other side of the story. And I don't think we could even get into it in such a small um, time frame. but you know, there, I don't know, man, if you just poked around a little bit, I think uh, uh, it's pretty transparent to people yeah. with a little bit of a brain. Yeah. So anyways, you made money off other people's images and stuff. So it looks like other people are making money off, you know, that do you see that resemblance? Um, well, no one's making money because Netflix doesn't pay for documentaries, but Netflix is making money. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, <laughs> I mean, I don't know. It's kind of funny to be honest, but the, <laughs> I mean, I think it's, it's 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 like oh, it's came full circle. The issue is that I, you know, I have a book for sale, so it's like they made me so much goddamn money when that Netflix documentary came out, which I didn't think they thought would happen. Um, but, uh, yeah, as long as everybody's getting paid, it is what it is. I mean, uh, it's been so long and, uh, yeah, I mean, um, definitely though, if you were exploited on the site, you know, I think, uh, yeah, maybe you should definitely get some compensation, but yeah. You you seem to have manipulated the, you, you know how to play the media very well for your own advantage, whether it was positive or negative press, like what was it like when it started going mainstream hunter, like did you see the massive change in the attention? Um, yeah. I mean, like I said, you know, it went from, you know, it went from just the scene. Like I said, like my scene, my immediate party scene and the band scene, I guess. Um, and yeah, it, and I, it, I'm telling you, it started with Forbes. Like once Forbes came to me, it's, it, yeah, it completely changed. I mean, you know, I had Facebook coming after me. I got in that fucking thing with Mark Zuckerberg. And I just, yeah, man, it was just like, yeah, it was just a whole nother animal. But uh, I loved it, dude. Like, it was just, oh, okay, you guys really want to fuck with me? I'll show you. <laughs> I'll fuck with you back. The, the issue was that my, my presence online you know, was so big and so massive. I was bigger than the BBC's fucking Twitter account. I was bigger than all these people. So when they would put out these lies, I, dude, we would just, just bombard them. You know, the second I was arrested and they took my social media and I couldn't defend myself and I had my hands tied behind my back, then it was just a relentless assault assault. And then they changed the narrative of what is anyone up was. And that was the hardest part for me, you know, but when I was able to speak, it was easy because um, I loved it. But yeah, did they cancel you? you Man, I don't know. One, I you myself. must have. Yeah, you must have been one of the first. You know what, though, dude? Look, it's crazy. Like you know, I'm canceled or whatever the fuck because I'm the most hated man in the world. It is a blessing, dude. Like I can do whatever the fuck I want. Like I work for my. Well, I actually I'm kind of retired now, but uh, like I have my own money. Like I fuck it. Well, now I'm in Colombia, but like. Uh, I could say whatever they want. Like I could turn into, I could start dressing like Hitler, dude. What are you guys going to do? No one can do anything. Like you've already canceled me, dude. I'm done. So 
it's kind of freeing and liberating. So, <laughs> what do you think the uh, the biggest buzz for you was back then? The cocaine and the pussy, dude. <laughs> <laughs> when did so, the yeah. uh, when did the court charges start coming through? Um, was I got raided? My house got raided in 2012, and but it, so I don't know how it is uh, over there. But the uh, you know the feds here they raid you, then like the discovery process starts, right? And you'll just be like, oh, I'm good, you know, nothing's gonna happen because years could pass. So I was like, oh, no, everything's good, and I I had already sold my website and I had started my influencer career. This was like before influencer term i guess started and i was just doing twitter and stuff and living my life and yeah i got off a flight um and i tweeted uh back in khalifa is what i tweeted and like they knew i was at home or something and they came that fucking morning and took me away what you thinking then did you ever realize it would come to that no dude oh man that's a whole nother story dude like they so they they cut they come, you know, they they come to the door and they were like, hey, man, you remember when we were here a few years ago? And I was like, yeah. They were like, all right, well, you're under arrest. Uh, here's your, here's your, um, your fucking whatever it was, the, your indictment. But it's sealed. So we're going to take you to court. And I was like, what the fuck? And I was like, in my underwear. But I had just smoked, like, to go to bed. And I was, so I was, I was like, I, like, you know, I was only asleep for maybe two hours. And so I'm still hella high and I'm like, what the fuck? And uh, so I go to the courthouse and, you know, they cut your fucking laces out of your shoes and all that bullshit. And they take me there and, I, and I'm, they put me in, you know, the Unabomber? You remember the Unabomber? They were like, dude, you get to go into the Unabomber cell. And like, I, they have my fucking hands, my neck to my feet, all this shit. And they got me chained. I can't even like scratch my balls or anything. I'm just stuck to the fucking bench. And they're like, uh... They were like, all right, man, we're going to wait till you get to court. And I, and I still don't know what the fuck is going on. You know, I'm just like, all right. So I'm waiting for my attorney because I had put it when I got raided. I put an attorney on retainer and I was like, fuck, I hope he hears about this. It shows up <laughs> and he was there. And uh, so I go to court and they were like, listen, uh, there's too much hype. There, there was media everywhere. They were like, we're, we'll, we're going to reschedule this for tomorrow. So they take me to county. uh to the county jail and which was right across the street from a federal courthouse and um my they were like okay your attorney wants to see you know after they make you drop your pants and spread your butt cheeks and all that stuff they're like okay your your boy or your boyfriend your <laughs> your, your uh, lawyer wants to see you so they put me in the thing and he was like all right bro he's like he slams it down the paper and it's like the glass plexiglass thing with all like people's carved shit in there you know, all the gang stuff and he was like all right, man, this right here. And he slides it to me. He's like, this right here, you're fucked. <laughs> I was like, what? He's like, you know how much time they want to give you? And I was like, what? He's like, they want 54 years. And I was like, for what? What the fuck? You know? And he was like, I don't know. He's like, this shit is crazy. He's like, uh, and you got to understand, man, like this was 2000. It was January 23rd, 2014. It, you got like these are like crazy boomer dudes who dude, never understood or never even studied internet law. Don't even know what the Communications Decency Act is. They don't know Section Two Thirty. They don't know any of this shit. Like these are just straight boomers, dude. And they don't. So just to even find somebody willing or knowingly how to defend that was a challenge unto itself. So him, my, this attorney, well accomplished attorney. He he just was like, I just don't understand this. I don't know what the fuck to do. You know, he ended up getting me out on bail for I don't know, it was like one hundred fifty thousand bail, one hundred fifty thousand dollar bail or some shit. And I had all these crazy restrictions, basically house arrest for two years. Um, and I fought my case for two years, and then yeah, that was pretty much it. When did you get? What did you get sentenced to? Two and a half years. Yeah, so that was a wild ride onto itself. So like I told you, my co defendant. Um, the guy that was hacking, he, he, um, you know, I had, I couldn't do anything because he was telling on me. Right. So, cause he was a rat. He gets, uh, it's called a five K one, which you don't want on your paperwork in prison. Uh, 
he was going to get a 5k one to tell on me. So he was basically going to get like, you know, three months or some shit. And, uh, so I couldn't go to trial. So what happened was, uh, I, so during that two years, uh, we were, we went from 54 years to 52 years, then to 14 years. So, uh, in the federal sentencing guidelines, there's a scale and depending on your, like, if, if your priors and the the type of felony it is like you just work over right so there's there's it's all mandatory minimums which was the crime bill that bill clinton joe biden all of them signed in the 90s there's it's called a mandatory minimum and so it's just a fucking scale and uh <clears throat> and that was it so it was like I went from 14, 54 to 14 because charges started dropping off, you know, and they started consolidating everything. So the 54 years was like five, it was like 500 counts of aggravated identity theft. And they turned that into one. You see what I'm saying? So it slowly started coming down. But then I lived with knowing I was going to get 14 years for a year. And I mean, you know, for a kid that, you know, was on this high to that, you know, I wanted to fucking kill myself. And then, um, Anyway, so then at the, I was gonna, I was like, fuck it, we'll go to trial, you know, like it doesn't matter. I'd get anywhere from seven to 14 years, um, but it was gonna be really expensive. But then an amazing thing happened. The federal guidelines were changing for white, for white collar criminals. So I was a white collar criminal because of hacking and shit. And um, it, the problem was I was being sentenced in on October 23rd or something. Or no, it was, yeah, it was, it was October 23rd or whatever, but the guidelines didn't change till November 2nd. So I wasn't going to benefit, right? But if I could benefit from it, I would only get, uh, um, it was 12 months to 30 months. Like that was the man, like that's all they could give me, right? It's, but they, they pushed back my co-defendant. So he was going to get sentenced on the day the guidelines changed, except, and I was going to get sentenced right before him. And they were doing that to give me the more time, you know, the prosecutor. So, uh, my new, I hired a new attorney. He went to school with the judge and he, he called her and we we're all on the phone and he was, and she didn't fucking hated me. Right. And, uh, he was like, he's like, look at, he's like, these, uh, I forgot. It was like the way that they raided his house and this charge, uh, the feds did something illegal. So we need $10,000 and to push the date back to investigate this. And she was like, I just need to get off the phone here. I'll send this over to my, (laughs) my assistant. And that saved me, man. I would still be in prison to this day if she didn't push back my, my charge. So I ended up getting sentenced later and I only got the 30 months, which was the max sentence. And, uh, yeah. What are you thinking when there's a possibility of getting 14 years, 20 years, 50 years? Like, did you genuinely believe you could have got 54 years? Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I've been in trouble before, but not, not like that, man. And, you know, uh, you know, state versus, I mean, I don't, I don't know how it is over there, but here it's state and federal, right? State, if you have the money, you can, you can normally fight it and they're going to do everything they can to keep you out of prison. Right. So, and, uh, I mean, as long as you're not a violent offender, but in the feds, they have a 98.9% conviction rate. Like you, bro, you're going to prison. You're going to, you're going to fucking prison, dude, unless you're a crazy rat and like a narco or some fucking thing. So yeah, I was fucked. I was completely fucked. And then, you know, they, it, you, you, then you get online and, you know, you start searching shit and, it, you know, like when you're sick and you get on WebMD and everyone, everything says you have cancer, like that's kind of what, like what it was, you know? And, uh, so yeah, it, it, it was pretty horrible. Um, but I will say though, that wasn't the hardest part about it, the, the situation at all. The hardest thing for me was getting off of fame. That and clout, like internet clout and internet fame, that was like get, probably getting off fucking heroin. Like the hardest, craziest heroin there could ever be. That was the hardest thing for me. And I still battle with it every day because I want to come back to the internet. Netflix really put me to the test, but I could go through the federal system again and but i wouldn't wish ever going through getting off fame again dude that's was fucking horrible do you think that's why you haven't retaliated because you're a man who doesn't really sit back and 
let others talk about them without responding. But do you think that yeah. 54 years possibility has scared you off a bit? Um, yeah, for sure. Um, and that's why I live here now. <laughs> 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 um, you know, I, <clears throat> you know, I love my country. Like I'm a devout fucking nationalist. Like, uh, I, you know, I, I love my country. I, I hope I can fight and die for my country at some point. But when you get to peek behind the curtains of, you know, how I was treated and I'm not saying like, you know, I don't, I didn't deserve any consequences. I definitely did. I'm not saying that, but, um, and even just removing myself from the situation and, you know, um, the horrible shit that I saw and dealt with in prison and just the way, oh man, it just really, I mean, it really puts you, I, I, it was just a really insane reality check for me, you know? And, uh, yeah, I don't, I, I hope to never experience that again. And, um, yeah, I guess it did skill me back a little bit in some ways, but you know, I'm also not 20 years old, bro. Like I'm fucking 36 years old, you know, I'm a full grown man. Like can't be running around like that anymore. But, um, you know, there's, there's more than one component to this thing. It's not just one thing, you know, how was, uh, the mental health side of things that like, obviously you'll have victims watching and people who was, didn't want their images used will say it's karma, but how were you in a mental state when you were going through that sort of stuff? Um, it, it's all, it was all just selfish, dude. It wasn't like I, in that, in, in that time, it was, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't care. You know, it wasn't, it was nobody else's ish or it wasn't, it wasn't, um, it, like I wasn't me that did anything wrong. It was everybody else. You see what I'm saying? Like it was, and that's how like I, uh, had to, like at how I was dealing with it at first, but you got, again, though, like I was a, a fucking drug addict. I was just a selfish piece of shit. Like I didn't even talk to my family really or anything besides giving them money. Like it wasn't, you know, so I just reverted back into that natural state that I was in, you know? So it wasn't until later that, um, you know, I, I started, you, you know, coming to the realization of, you know, having to deal with stuff in a more mature way. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. How did your parents react to it? Oh, um, I don't disappointed. Know, yeah, yeah, no, I mean, like, uh, you know, I, I in my town, Woodland, California, like, dude, I'm, I'm, I'm loved by everybody. You know, I'm part of three men's clubs at home. Like I do a lot of stuff for the community. Um, I've been a member of the Carlton club. I was like, I'm on the board over there. I mean, it's a big men's club been around since 1909, whatever, but Elks club member, uh, uh, Legion, whatever. Um, I do a lot for the community and people respect me, man. So, and they respect my family. Like my grandfather was the chief of police there. Like, you know, the, so, you know, people, you know, in the community never haven't really given us a hard time or any of that stuff. Like everyone's supportive. You know, when the the a journalist comes to the house, the whole fucking neighborhood comes out or they're calling us or they're fucking calling the cops. Like I got old no Gail across the street from uh, my parents' house. If anybody fucking comes to my parents' house, she's out there in her wheelchair, man. She's ready to fucking go, dude. So um, you know, they th as far as like being in the community and protecting my parents and stuff like there, that was always okay. But, um, you know, uh, it was just really stressful for them, like being in the media and all that stuff. And then when this fucking Netflix documentary coming out and having to relive everything after I moved on and, you know, did my time and all that stuff. And then they're getting messages on Facebook and, you know, people telling my mom to kill herself. And, you know, that, that, that's, that, that was hard, but, you know, now it's all kind of blown over. But can you see like the connection as well? Because see on like any, yeah. anyone up, anyone up dot com, did you not have the people's social media links to their photos as well, Hunter? Again, that now you gotta remember, bro, that what they're saying has always been twisted, right? So again, it was an open forum, like I said. I never personally put anybody's anything. All I did was make sure it was 18. I pressed submit. It was the community. Like they would start submitting people's links. So again, but yes, I understand what you're saying. Um, 
Yeah. I mean, yeah, it does come full circle. And, you know, I thought about that a lot and like me and my dad, you know, we, you know, we talk about it and stuff and, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it is what it is, you know, what can, what, what can I, what can I do? Um, I just hope to, you know, maybe at 20 years, uh, we could, I could finally just live my life, you know? <laughs> how were you treated, how were you treated in prison? Uh, so I'm good, dude. Uh, it sucked, you know, I had to join a white gang and all this shit. And like, I'm from California and I had to do prison time and, Beaumont, Texas, which is on the Louisiana, Texas border. Um, you know, I didn't, I don't, you know, I'm Mexican and white, so I didn't, uh, you know, I don't really subscribe to the race shit, but you know, it, I had to in prison, you know what I mean? But because I was ca- from California, I, I, as, as I got vetted, people knew I wasn't a sex offender and all that other, or a rat. Um, I kind of got to h- hide behind being from California. So I got to hang out with all races, man. And nobody at a, eventually, um, uh, it was cool. I mean, I couldn't hang out with sex offenders or anything, but I could hang out with the blacks or the Mexicans or the Pisces, whatever. Um, just because I was from California and people were like, Oh, he's just the, the weird California guy. who's not racist. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Well, how many do you ask to join a gang as soon as you're in prison in California? Well, no, I was in Texas, but in California, yeah. Yeah. But as soon as I walked into the dorm, uh, I got, you know, they all, everybody, um, you know, the, whatever, the, not the shot callers, the fucking, the, I forget, I forget all the prison shit now, but yeah, they all come up to you and they check you for your paperwork. Um, but you know, I was so green, I didn't have paperwork. So they, they gave you 30 days, uh, to produce your paperwork. I got it. I don't know, like three or four days. And, uh, yeah, I just the the I w- I could either have ran independent or with the the fuck I forget which the I forget which Mexican fucking gang, but anyways, or the whites, but the whites the whites didn't uh, they had like the best they got the best food and had the best bunks, so I was like, fuck it, I'll just go with it. <laughs> so yeah, was that much trouble in these prisons, Hunter? Yeah. I mean, uh, I mean, not for me, you know, cause I, I didn't, I, you know, I went into the mindset of, um, I'm not going to gamble. I'm not going to watch sports. You know, I just, I wanted to, I wanted to like better myself. So I, I just stayed studying and working out. That's like all I did every fucking day, just worked out. Um, I ended up changing my religion to native. So I got to start doing, um, you know, uh, building sweat lodges, doing a ton of stuff with the the natives in prison and, you know, just learned a lot, sing songs, got to smoke pipe, peace pipes and all kinds of shit. I mean, to be honest, dude, prison, prison was fucking awesome. It was kind of one of the probably better times of my life. Like I learned a lot. It was met amazing people. Uh, yeah, it was, it was awesome to be honest. Um, I mean, it was horrible at the same time, but yeah. Do you think that's what changed you? Maybe t- matured you a bit and seen seen the world a bit differently? Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, of course, in some ways, but uh, you know, I am still who I am, you know. <laughs> but yeah, it it definitely did, but um, you know, there there was some horrific shit in there that kind of fucked me up, but I still kind of like PTSD from that shit. Um, but uh like what? Yeah. I don't want to talk about it. Just, you know, sit, watching people die and shit like that. Just fucked up bullshit. But, um, you know, and I lost two friends in there, which was fucked up. But, uh, yeah, it just, uh, yeah, it puts it into reality. Uh, you know, I got a reality check a little bit in that sense. Because, you know, I've never failed at anything. Which, that was like my another big, like, hurdle for me. Is that everything I've ever done, I've always been successful at. It doesn't matter, like every business, every fucking thing like that. I start as anyone up and it's, it just blows up. You know, like I start doing Twitter blows up. Like everything I do, I've always fucking excelled at. Um, but then I failed and I had to learn to fail. And I think learning to fail is actually more important than succeeding. And that took me, I think that was probably one of the bigger lessons for me. So for a kid who's then thriving, who's then made media headlines that worldwide, like, and then in prison, like, how does that moment then 
come to like where you're thinking where the fuck did I go wrong like mental health starts slipping you lose friends in prison like it's su such a short reality for where you used to be in that bubble thinking you're untouchable to then in prison mental health slipping and, and losing friends like how hard was that like to try and move on fast or did it's just something you have to deal with yeah no i i i had a uh this dude fuck i forget his name he was such a good dude i we used to play handball together and like I, I was stressing the fuck out and like you could tell when people are stressing especially in prison you know and uh this and i i like because all i was doing was like i was like fuck i gotta get out of here you know like but my, I, my mind was going back to the streets you know like i like meaning like i was i was on street time you know for like like i don't know i don't know how to explain it like you know i wasn't fully i wasn't like this is my world now you know and so i was dealing with all this crazy shit and we were playing handball and he was like he, he was just like, bro, you got to get your head out of the streets. He's like, the second you do that, this thing's going to go by so fast and you're going to get out of here. Um, just focus, just focus on here. Like to fucking cut all your bridges. Stop talking to your lady. Like just, you know, you only got a few more months left and that fuck dude, that just set me off. Like it kind of opened the gate for me. And I was kind of like, just free. Like I, I stopped talking to like all the girls I was hanging on to and like getting the updates from home and all that shit. And then it, and I just focused on prison, dude. And that's what got uh, literally cleared my mind. And I mean, dude, the days were going so fast. It felt like, like, I, I don't know. I, like, it was just so, it was just crazy. Like I remember folding my blanket, like maybe a month before I was leaving and the day, like uh, making my bed, it was like 6 30 a.m and i was like fuck dude i was just having deja vu because that's how fast the day i felt like i was just doing it do you know what i mean like the days were just so yeah it was yeah and then i just started becoming happy again why did you sell is anyone up.com because in the documentary it says you sold it for twelve thousand dollars to an anti-bullying campaigner come on bro get the fuck out of here so <laughs> First of all, that is a fucking lie. Second of all, uh, the other thing is they that lawyer. I don't even know who the fuck that is, dude. Like, where's my retainer? Show me the retainer. I don't even know who the fuck that guy is. I don't know who the fuck that dude is. I don't know. Anyways, uh, I guess they're just hiring anybody bum off the street. But I, you think you would at least show the retainer so you would know that he was actually my attorney. But anyways um no that wasn't true uh i you know there's again i have to be careful with what i say because there is a contract and there's you know monetary but actually i mean i'm here you ain't gonna fucking find me here but uh yeah no i just want to be careful but that's definitely a lie i mean dude you can look at my old alexa rating rating ranking um actually i don't even think alexa's still around i was getting millions of hits a, a, a month dude i'm definitely not selling the fucking site for twelve thousand dollars i made that on ad revenue in a week probably so no that's definitely not true what about but is it butthole girl like who the who was she <laughs> like there's some mad stories and i'm thinking like, it's so far-fetched all that shit like that is mad like who was that she was, oh my god this is what i'm saying like the site was awesome dude so like we i start you know who Howard Stern is, right? Yeah, yeah. Mad guy you know with how, black hair. Yeah, you know how he... Well, he had this thing called the Whack Pack, right? Well, I had my own Whack Pack, which was like all these crazy characters. Um, so, like, dude, we used to have competitions and stuff. Like, we used to have girls sword fight, you know? And we, they put two knives in their buttholes and fucking... Like, crazy shit, right? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, the site was insane. And people would do, like, every, like you're just thinking, like, I'm on here posting people's pics. Like, ha fuck you. Here's your Twitter account. No, dude. This was people, like, we would hold challenges and raffles and all kinds of shit. Butthole girl, she wanted to be famous so fucking bad. And I think you should, you, you could probably tell that from her being in this Netflix documentary. I mean, no one knew you were butthole girl anymore. Now you're literally butthole girl till the day you fucking die. So she wanted to be famous. She hit me up and she was like, can you make me a website? And I was like, yeah, I'll make you a website. Uh, which I had no intention of making her a fucking website. She was just on cam and wanted to get naked. She, and I was like, okay, well, let me record this video. And, uh, you know, for, for, is anyone up? 
And which the video, you can go on efucked.com and it's still there, which the webmaster is amazing. But if you want to see the funny, the whole video, it's really awesome. Efucked.com. I think it's just webmaster tells girl to stick something in her butt or something. I don't know. Anyway, she was like, she told me she had a magical butthole. That's how we obviously, so why wouldn't, bro, come on. I'm 20 something years old. Like you're telling me you have a magic butthole and I get to watch you put stuff in it. Like, why the fuck wouldn't I do that? Like, are you out of your fucking mind? You wouldn't watch that? Like, just to watch it? I'd still do that now. Anyways, so she... <laughs> you don't have to answer. But, so she... <laughs> so she... So she I'll, answer she, it when, she, I'll answer it when the cameras are off, bro. <laughs> <laughs> so so she's, she's sitting there. She's putting odor eaters in her butt. Fucking deodorant. Like, all the... Like, dude, she's filming around the house. And I'm like, yeah, stick that in your ass. Stick that in your ass. And then I was like, put your phone in your ass and let me call it. And so she put her phone in her ass and it vibrated up. Like, dude, and then she let me put it on the website. And then we started every week, we would have a, a poll and uh, people would vote on the objects that they wanted butthole girl to stick in her butt. And then she would stick those in her butt like that. That. And so anyways, the fact, bless, look at her name's Destiny Benedict. You, she's amazing. I, I'm still friends with her to this day. You can follow her on Instagram. She She's a sweetheart, right? She's just maybe... I wish you would. I I feel like I've exploited people, obviously, right? But I felt like Netflix exploited Destiny and took advantage of her more than I ever could, dude. And I I don't want to call her dumb or anything. Like she's an amazing, beautiful girl, but I really feel horrible. I, that was the only thing that really. I, I don't care about Charlotte Laws or any of that shit, but I just felt horrible that they did that to Destiny and let her do that. Did you watch the? Netflix documentary yourself? Yeah, I watched the first episode because I looked hella. F- I looked funny, dude. Like it was. They put. <laughs> they put. Uh, I fuck fat girls and have a small dick. Or some <laughs> <fucking> thing. <laughs> I was cracking up, and then uh, um, my friends here. They had. They uh, we did like a little movie night or whatever, and we we watched it, but it was so fucking boring, dude. I I got to like. I don't know the half of the second one, and I just said, "Fuck yeah, I'm gonna watch it." Yeah, it was too slow. How much do you miss that old life, Hunter? Uh, I don't miss. I don't miss it, dude. I don't, don't miss it. Don't fucking lie, bro. <laughs> like, it must be part of you thinking because you look at things like Jackass now. Like it's all men, and they do some fucking mad shit. People sit in the cinema, they watch and laugh. I'm not saying that like, you're Jackass, but I'm saying that like, some of the content in there's Jackass like. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Some of the context so fucked up that oh, people yeah, are intrigued yeah. by it. Like, obviously, you've just admitted like you exploit people. Some people might feel groomed. That, but again, you've not forced anyone to be doing these things. No, no. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, but to circle back to, do I miss it? Um, I mean, dude, here's the thing. I still get insane amount of pussy, right? And I'm in the fucking cocaine capital of the world. So like, I could still have that lifestyle if I wanted to. I'm not saying I'm like fucking Andrew Tate or anything over here, but like my, uh, that, but that life of living a negative fucking, just, just all that nasty shit, the fake people, the fucking just, it was just gross, bro. I, I, but it also comes with age and maturity, I think, you know what I mean? And, uh, yeah, I mean, there's obviously some I mean, dude, I got the best ass of my life at that time. So obviously I missed that. But other than that, like, I just, I don't ever want to live in that headspace like that again. So it's not worth it. I don't know. Why is it though, like, we're in this day in society that we get so caught up in views and, and likes that like, as a drug, like you say, it's worse than heroin. Like you get so consumed by trying to feel popular or trying to do daft shit to just to create numbers to then try and feel important. Why do you think that is in this day and age? It's got worse. Uh, and, and it's only going to get worse. Um, I mean, why that is, I mean, I don't know, dude, it's just, it's that dopamine hit, man. They've programmed it to just be all day, man. It, 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 you're leveling up. It's a real life video game. You know what I mean? And not only are you having a monetary value to, to what you're doing you are constantly having to push the envelope to maintain that (laughs) your new drug addiction and that little fucking number dude like 
I mean, I'm sure you check your subscriber count every fucking day. That's your yeah. level in life now. That's yeah. how people see you. That's how people are judging you. And, you know, that's, I mean, it is what it is. And uh, it's only going to get worse. And I mean, like, you can attribute to uh, just, you know, the, the the subscriber count and all this stuff to, I mean, at least in America, is the violence that is happening. I mean, dude, it, it's everything is is being magnified times 10 because people want that clout i mean look at fucking chicago look at i mean fuck look at where i'm from bro like people are doing the most wildest shit and telling on themselves on instagram live and then fucking shooting at each other and it's all for clout it ain't for anything else dude it's just for clout and i don't we haven't even seen the fucking peak of this shit yet and it's only gonna it's all sorry oops uh, i got a there you go i i just think it's gonna get I don't know, man. As someone who lived it, I just feel like, yeah. Yeah, I, I suppose. Know. That's why I interview colorful characters, controversial characters. I've had Andrew Tate on. I'm interviewing yourself. Yeah. Like, it's because it gets people to talk and it gets people to yeah. talk. It gives me free publicity. Free publicity just means more money. Like, I've got a family to feed. I don't give a fuck what people say. My job is just to yeah. let people tell their story from their side. I don't pass judgment. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's not it's my true. fucking job. Yeah. I, ain't, I ain't a fucking judge. I ain't a jury. I'm just here to create a story. People can go, do you know what? He's actually a nice guy. People can say, do you know what? I think he's still whatever. That, that, that's, uh, we, we can't please everybody. No, hell no. No, and I mean, uh, yeah, I don't really, I mean, dude, I don't lose any sleep over that shit either, though. Did you ever, like, when it got so fucking heavy, like, how did you handle the comments, like, the negatives? See, that's the thing, man. I, I, that, that's what's hard for me is because I get off on that shit. I fucking love it. I love the negative stuff. That's that because I, I know you're a fucking loser. Like, I know you're a fucking loser. And so, like, the fact that you're even giving me this attention is just like, I'm now, you're feeding me. Do you know what I mean? You might, you're feeding the bear, bro. And now I'm just going to keep coming back, you know, for more food. And that uh, was the, that, that, that right there was my biggest downfall is that right there is because that's what got me off. And yeah. So I don't know. This says that you were going to make a comeback and make a new website bigger and stronger and more controversial. Is that a lot of shit? No. Nah, uh, so uh, <laughs> there was, I was in, I flew to New York for a party and, uh, my friend Damien, he used to like sell me Coke in New York. And I was like, bro, come, come meet the Washington Post, this Washington, this chick from the Washington Post. And he was like, oh, you think we could fuck her? <laughs> I was like, I don't know. So we go to this bar, she meets us. And uh, we were just fucking with her the whole time. And we were like, yeah, dude, uh, me and Damien, he's my, on my new team. And we started Is Anyone Up 2.0. And now we have, we're using Google Maps and we're going to put your house address and all this. Just saying the most outlandish fucking shit. There was never anything. It, it's just a bait and switch, dude. And then they all ran with it like it was real. I never did any of that. So. Uh, how hard is it like looking back at it when you start growing a bit of a conscience you start seeing the world a little differently we get older like do you feel for people or is it just a case of you know what it's in the past fuck it um you know i uh you know it was such a big part of my life obviously like uh for for a, for a while there like when i was on probation because i was on probate federal probation for three years and you know talking to my fucking probation officer that goddamn bitch dude i fucking hated her she hated me she made me relive this shit constantly and it was just it's so cringy like you know when you look at old photos of yourself and you look like a fucking little asshole like imagine times a billion dude like it's not just high school yearbook anymore i mean this shit was everywhere and people can google me like type in hunter and fucking google and it shows hunter more and it's a little goofy picture of me and it says webmaster like ah but you know i just uh Again, I don't dwell on it. I now I just think it's funny and it's it's just a, a part of my my journey and my character, dude. So I, I gotta embrace it. Did you ever get therapy, Hunter? Yeah, what shit? Oh, yeah, like crazy, dude. Like I've had abuse counseling to fucking I mean, I've had so many Miss English, uh Mr. Mackin or Dr. Mackin, uh Dr. Valerie. I've had oh, dude, I've been to them all, bro. 
<laughs> so yes, I have. Do you think it helps as an individual? Like, cause we all fuck up, we all make mistakes, we all think like I've interviewed murderers, the biggest drug lords on the planet. Like at that time it felt right for them. Like, but obviously as they get older, they mature, they realise the destruction, the pain they cause. Like, do you think therapy helps to then see the world a little differently? I don't know, man. I I like you know, I, I've done a lot of therapy. I mean, group therapy, one-on-one, fucking NA, SA. I've done all kinds of shit, right? Um, and now, like, I thought it, I don't know, dude. I, and I, I, I feel bad even saying this, but I feel like I've had more success, like, the reading and just trying to learn about myself than doing therapy if that makes sense. And I'm not knocking it. Like, obviously everyone has their own route and their own way to deal with their issues. For me though, I feel, I feel like I've had a, I've had more success, uh, doing it on my own. And I think that's just like how I, that's just the, my natural state, but that's for me, but for, and I, I mean, I did years, I did eight years of different types of therapy. So like, I feel like I'm kind of a vet in this, um, but yeah, I don't know. Everyone's got their own thing, different strokes for different folks, I guess. Why did you choose Columbia to live? Uh, cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see you tomorrow, brother. I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> I know I'm all fun. <laughs> uh, uh, I mean, bro. Bro, look at this shit. It is just a. It's the most beautiful fucking country, and you know the the people are. It's it's just a brush of fresh air. Like it, it feels like it feels like America in the nineties, man. Like, um, you know, obviously there's poverty and stuff, but not liking America. Like these people think I, I'm fucking lying about just how bad California is right now and the violence and all that stuff. And here it's just, the people are amazing, man. Like it's not the rat race isn't here. Like it's, it, it's cheap people, you know, it's a real, real Catholic culture. Um, you got, it's just, it's just, I fucking love it. So, yeah. yeah. See, I don't want to touch too much on it, but see, I know a lot of girls um, are posting naked pictures. Obviously, you says there's more men, but and some girls responded to requ requested to get photos took down. What would? Oh, you, yeah. But how would you have felt if it was your sister and someone done that to her? Yeah, you know, I've been asked this question a million fucking times, um, but uh, I mean, not so much now because I don't do interviews, but. Uh, Back in the day, like, you know, I'd be like, oh, well, they needed to take, they need to take responsibility for their own actions. You know what I mean? And I still feel, I still feel that way. Um, you know, uh, eventually when I do, do have kids, um, I'm not giving them a fucking phone until they're 18. I mean, that's just, that's just me, man. But, uh, you know, when you're an adult, I feel like, yeah, you need to have some sort of responsibility at some point, like, fuck. But, uh, obviously, Obviously, I would be upset. So, see, yeah. girls, like, what do you think? People who send photos and stuff and nudes, like, you can't trust anybody. Like, anybody should know now, even though you're in a relationship and you're sending nudes. Listen, relationships don't last now. So, you're basically fucking, and it's understandable you've sent it to them for privacy, and I get it. But nowadays, like, I think like porn's the most Googled thing on the internet, or second, like, it's, and, and 60 70 percent of the stuff is on it is abuse like a lot, a lot of, yeah yeah like, so it's it's fucked up but what do you say about people who send nudes and make sex videos do you think it's silly <laughs> i mean dude it's human nature bro what are you fucking gonna do i mean yeah it, it's i mean i don't know it's I mean, I can't say anything. I just sent a picture of my dick to some chick I met at the gym <laughs> yesterday. So, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, um, I don't know, man. I it, It's just hard for me. Like, the world has changed with OnlyFans and many vids and all that stuff and selling your own content. And, like, the morals have just gone out the fucking window. <laughs> so, I don't know, dude. I, I, don't, I, I don't know if I can even answer that question right now. Like, I just... Yeah, you can't just, after fucking sending a dick pic <laughs> yesterday. 
I just, I mean, for me, it's different. Like, what are you going to do? Like I, my dick's all, you could Google my dick right now if you wanted to. Like, for, like for me, it's just, for me, it's different. Do you know what I mean? Like I've been canceled. What do you, you know, but for everybody else, I mean, dude, you got to take your own situation in your own hands and have some sort of responsibility. But if you're underage, then that's a whole nother fucking situation. So, would you ever start yeah. an only, would you ever start an only fans? Um, I think I'm banned. I'm pretty much banned from everything, dude. Seriously? Yeah, I tried I tried to sign up for many vids and was banned uh, outright and they told me to never contact them again. And that this was like before Netflix and stuff. And uh yeah, I was going to try OnlyFans, but I don't know, dude. I I don't know. I don't really give a fuck to be honest. How is it how's it the Netflix boosted your popularity again when you're trying to put it to bed you've served your time but this is just put it fucking back to top tier again i think it was top three netflix most watched yeah it was crazy there for a minute um yeah i mean dude again like i don't want to I, I just if i wanted to come back i could and do all this shit but again i'm old like what the fuck am i gonna do uh but uh as far as my popularity i didn't feel the fire you know what i mean like i have my instagram account which you know you contacted me through um but you know my interests have changed like i don't um i just didn't feel the fire you know what i mean so it wasn't if i wanted to i could have been out there just like ah like doing crazy shit and all that but no i just i just kind of sat back i gained a bunch of followers but i'm shadow banned on instagram so you i don't even come up in the search um yeah, so I didn't, and I don't have Twitter. I'm banned from Twitter, uh, so it's not like I tried to tried to do anything. Do you know what I mean? Um, but you know, and the reason I did this with you is, um, you know, uh, you know, I don't give interviews, and it just seemed like the it, the it, it had blown over, and if people are generally interested in the story and me, um, you know, they could find like a, a good piece of content on a on an established channel about me. And yeah, and that, that that's pretty much it. But yeah, as far as like trying to boost my popularity, I don't give a fuck. I don't yeah. yeah. I don't I need appreciate it. that. Like I say, coming on today and I know a lot of journalists I'm I wouldn't class myself as a journalist. I'm just there to let the guest tell their story. Like without passing judgment, like we all fuck up, we all make mistakes. What you've done is yeah. it's almost some wouldn't really give a fuck and some would but it's understandable some girls are distraught some men are distraught but it's understandable a lot of people had fun on that website and you can take the good with the bad in anything in life it's fucking called life like what what we're gonna do do you know what i mean what the fuck we're yeah. gonna do but um, i don't know hunt, man yeah where does hunter <laughs> Moore go from here i don't know dude i i sold my i started a company when i got off probation two years ago and uh yeah, I've just been I've just been chilling, just traveling, and uh, you know, making up for that time that I lost. You know what I mean? And uh, getting closer with my family and my friends, um, making new friends, and just enjoying life. And uh, you know, hopefully, being uh, you know, finally moving past this, which I know I never will, but um, you know, just moving on with my life and doing something uh, a little bit more positive. And I don't know what that is yet, but we'll figure it out. Yeah, you seem to be a guy who can make the positives, take it, turn the negatives into a positive. And like you say, coming on today and telling your story from your side and putting the record straight, people can make assumptions, people can judge. It's fucking called life. But how do you then, do you see yourself maybe getting back at it? Because like, well, because we, no matter what, like, we, we miss that life, like, we, we miss something. Do you know, no matter how much therapy we get or drugs or how much pussy you get that do you not think there's always something fucking missing <laughs> yeah i guess but it's uh i don't know dude it's not well i don't know i just look at i'm always gonna miss the drugs and the pussy dude always but the issue is i always i can still get drugs and pussy like i'm not it's I, i'm fucking in Colombia, dude these girls asses are insane like i it doesn't it's so easy it's like fishing with fucking grenades so that void is filled um yeah that's it and I, you know i'm financially stable and uh i think it's just more putting my family through that stuff so it, that's really it, that's really what it comes down to so like making a comeback or doing anything maybe it will be in one form or another but nothing like that i i just yeah man i don't know 
Yeah. But like I say, people watch this and have not really heard you tell it from your side. And it's, um, I think it's only fair that people get to tell their story without things being twisted and edited and all the bullshit they do. That like, you're clearly showing empathy as well and sorry for your actions back in the day. That like, that is a hard thing, especially when you're young. You're you're drugged up. You think money's the fucking the best thing ever. That like, you'll do anything for it. But for any of the girls that are watching, it's maybe being distraught. Or they feel let down. Like what is, what would you say to them? I don't, I. I just don't know what to say because it's been so fucking long. Like, how 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 sorry do you want me to be? I just, dude, I went to prison, so yeah, I don't know. Fuck off. Like, I just leave me alone. Like, I'm sorry, dude. Oh my god, you're you're you were naked on the internet 12 years ago. I I just, it's hard for me to have any empathy right now. Look at, thank God nobody killed themselves. Thank fucking God nobody killed themselves. But at this point, bro, I I I've done my time. I paid my restitution, everything else. Everyone else can fuck off. You made a Netflix documentary. You made your money. We're done. We're good, okay? Let's go. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm good. But Hunter, for coming on today and, and giving me your time and telling your story, I appreciate it. But probably nobody would have ever, ever expected Hunter more to give um, mental health advice. But for anybody that's maybe struggling with mental health, what advice would you give for them? I... <sighs> You know, everybody's situation is different, but if you're, if you're going through like, it, it, you know, if, if you find yourself in a crazy situation and you feel like there's nothing else that no one can help you, none of that stuff, there's always some sort of support group or building a support group around you some way, somehow that could be, you know, your local church, your family, your friends, whatever. And having that strong support system is like everything in the world. And once you start from there, you can move your way up. And that's the best advice I can really give you. But, um, you know, life is a life is just ups and downs and where you're going to have to learn to deal with it. And learning how to suffer is the, is the one thing I can only tell you, you got to get really good at learning how to suffer. And once you do that, you can fucking do anything. So, yeah, that's all I that's all I got. Appreciate that, Hunter. For anybody that's maybe want to get in contact you or follow your socials, what do you have? Yeah, just uh follow me on Instagram, Hunter More Real. Um, and uh I do a geo geo I'm like a big geopolitical history nerd. So I I have a uh TikTok you can find me on. It's called News for the Homies. <laughs> it's a pretty popular decently popular TikTok if you guys are into geopolitics and stuff like that. And uh that's pretty much all I'm doing, man. Um and you can shoot me a message. You can tell me you hate me or tell me you love me. I don't know. But uh yeah, that's about it. Hunter, for coming on today and telling your story. I wish you all the best for the future. You've turned a new leaf and like I say, God bless you, stay strong and good luck with everything. Thanks, man. Talk to you later, bro. Peace out. God bless, mate. Bye. You too. Bye.